Hi, I'm Philip Paul. I have a prophetic message for the church in Finland. Now, what is a prophetic message? I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, and in my relationship with him, he has told me things to come for Finland. I wish I could tell you that this was a favorable message. However, this is a wake-up call, an urgent, sound the alarm type of message for Finland. I am not a gloom and doom type of person. I literally am very optimistic, and if you're in Christ, you are a new creation. So I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and I actually have a lot of joy right now, even though I'm about to deliver a hard word or a tough pill to swallow. I'm going to say a very quick prayer, and then I'm going to share this message with you about how Finland, especially this message is for the church. Anyone that is a Christian, you need to hear me, okay? This is a message for you about Finland. You have about three years left, okay? I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to share with you what is on God's heart and mind for Finland. (sighs) Jesus, I ask that I would just step out of the way. That you would um, just, that the fire would fall on the sacrifice, God. I'm putting myself out there for you, Lord, because I do know that you've spoken to me. And uh, whatever happens, happens. But God, I pray that your fire and your holiness would be on this message and that you would convict the hearts of those who listen and that they would have uh, just, they would hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say for them in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have not seen the previous two videos I will link them below, but this is a summary of them. The first video is uh, where I basically unpack the word that the Lord gave me maybe 10 to 12 months ago, um, having to do with Finland, you have four years left. The second one is a testimony of how I was standing at a golf course, somebody hit a ball, and I had to shout four to protect the person. And then later on that day, the Lord said to me, in the same way that you shouted four on a golf course to protect others, I am using you, Phil, to shout four to the nation of Finland. Finland, you have four years left. Now, we're closer to about three years at the time of making this video. I will share share that. But um, one other recap, and then I will share the newest information for Finland, is that I saw this vision one day in prayer while waiting on Jesus of narrow cylinder tubes removing bedrock from the ground. And then the Holy Spirit gave me the interpretation to the vision. He said, the bedrock is the word of God. The word of God is the bedrock of a nation and man-made systems are breaking through and removing it from this nation. Now, here are the most recent updates that I have. Again, this is a sobering, difficult message to receive. There is one silver lining at the end of it. And when I say a silver lining, it still is going to be hard to receive. Okay, this is a... Put on your boots and prepare your minds for battle, like church, wake up and rise, because in a few years time, all eyes are going to be on Finland. Okay. So on June 28th of 2023, so about a month ago, I received this while waiting in the morning in prayer, waiting for Jesus. Uh, I received this kind of very quick snippet. Okay. Finland's borders will probably be closing in about three years' time. Now, I wrote down, I'm not sure, because we prophesy in part, so these are my own confusion, like my own things that still need clarification. I'm not sure if this means the literal borders, but I think it does. But the country will be off limits for people to come or go, and I sense something like a changing of the landscape, okay? Like something to do with that. Now, again, everything that I am saying If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, first of all, don't ignore, don't despise prophecy. We're told that in the Bible, but we're also told to take this back. And what does it mean to test a prophecy? Well, first of all, you have to be cultivating a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's independent of your church. That is you at home reading your Bible, praying, skipping breakfast, uh, you know, like bringing this to the Lord in prayer. When Jesus Christ died and the veil was torn, that was symbolic that everyone can enter into the Holy of Holies. Anyone can be a part of this covenant where you have access to God. Okay, The New Testament church did not have a New Testament Bible. That came about 300 years later. So you better pray that those people had the same Holy Spirit that we have that gives us access to confirm what God wants. Now, let me also just be really clear. You can open up your Bible 
and spend time within it. And God will absolutely confirm his word to you in the infallible written Logos word of God. When I first received this message, I was broken, totally broken. I didn't know how to deliver this. And I knew that I was going to need God to just flush through me and do this. But I did spend time in the Bible and he brought me to the book of Jonah. And he showed me my own personal role in stewarding the stewardship of this message, the book of Jonah. That's that's me right now. So you have the Holy Spirit, you have the rhema, you have the logos, the written word, and you need to just understand that the word of God can confirm this for you personally. So please do cultivate your relationship with Christ. And if you're hungering and thirsting, he will provide the answer to you. So Bring this back to your own prayer life and seek Jesus to confirm this for you. But if not, I'm telling you, don't ignore this message. Please watch it all the way through. Okay. Now, the next one that I had was very sobering, but very encouraging. And I'm going to save that for the end. On July 6th, so about a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, I play golf and God will often speak to me through golf illustrations. I saw a bunker, like a sand bunker. And to the right of it, there was this flag and there was a Finnish flag waving in the air. Now, the interpretation, here's some of it. Sand bunkers are a place of difficulty. It represents unstable ground, a problem or a place of growth, but it's also a penalty. It is the result of bad choices and bad actions or even accidents. The flag is still standing and waving, however. Bunkers in war represent a place uh, of being like in the thick, being in the trenches and having to grow and overcome. But in general, bunkers are not a favorable place to be. However, a flag that is still standing, here are some scriptures that you can research some of the context of what that might mean. Uh, Psalm 20, verse 5, as well as 60, verse 4. The Song of Solomon, 2 verses 4, his banner over me is love, 6 verses 4, Isaiah 13, 2, Exodus 17, and Psalm 20, verse 5. To me, the flag was an illustration that this is specifically a vision for the nation of Finland, the bunker, okay? Today, I had a word that brought greater clarity to this, and this is what I heard uh, in prayer today, July 15th. Finland is quicksand, That is what I heard. And I'm sorry that I have to say that. And I know I'm going to lose a lot of you from viewing this, but this is what the Lord said to me. Like the ground of Finland right now, if you can think metaphorically, it's quicksand. What is quicksand? Well, it's a place where you sand, but you start to sink. You can watch any movie, just YouTube, what what quicksand is. It's not favorable. And this was a confirmation to the sand vision that I had received because I was praying for more of an interpretation. Like, God, like, I need to know more of what the sand means. But Remember what Jesus says, the wise man built his house upon the rock, but the fool, he built it on the sand. And when water tests something, thank you, Lord. Okay. I don't actually have this written down, but I need to write this. I need to say this. Uh, When water tests something, if it has a, a solid foundation, if it has a firm foundation, then it will withstand the test. Now, water can represent a lot of things. It can represent trials to come. But right now, the bedrock is being removed. And the foundation is sand, okay? I'm going to say this because I know I'll forget it otherwise. I did receive a vision uh, either this morning or yesterday of snow blowing in the wind. It was like I was looking outside of a window. Um, you know, my my in-laws are from Finland. So it was like I was looking out a window and I saw just the snowstorm blowing. And I feel as though the interpretation that came with that is snow represents God glor- God's glory and wind represents the movement of the Holy Spirit. So there is one positive Uh, additional thing that I want to release right now before I forget that, but I need to carry on here. (sighs) Two days ago on July 13th, I went camping with some Christian friends and that night I had a hard time sleeping because, well, I was camping. I heard the Lord say to me this, countries need to commit themselves to the Lord. So this includes Finland, but it extends beyond Finland. And I'll write down the impression that it had. Governmental bodies, people that are in charge in governments, they need to gather. They need to get together, even in their offices, and conclude, are we going to be leaders that dedicate our land to Jesus, to God, to the Lord? And are we going to use our influence and power to set in place ways that are God-honoring, God-fearing, and God-based? Okay, 
governmental leaders need to gather and decide, are they going to dedicate their land, their roles, their power? Are they going to dedicate their countries to God and honor him, fear him, and uh, have God-based principles? That is a clarion call right now to governments. Countries need to commit themselves to Jesus, to the Lord, is the word that I had heard. Countries need to commit themselves to the Lord. Now, that same night that I was having a hard time sleeping, let me lay some context and groundwork. We were, my wife and I were borrowing a tent, and this tent was really awful. It was built from probably the 80s or 90s. It didn't even work. Like, they didn't know how to build tents back then. It was so bad. I had a vision, um, and I saw poles and pegs that you would use to set up a tent. They were still in the bag, though, like in the sleeves. And then I heard this word, or like this is the the word that came along with the vision. Finland is like a tent without any poles or pegs. Again, I am sorry that this is not a happy message. (laughs) Like uh, This is another word confirming a lack of solid foundation, lack of solid structure, similar to quicksand. Finland is like a tent without any poles or pegs. And believe me, I have no interest in just saying this. Why would I be saying this? I live here, okay? This is going to invite persecution, rejection. This is going to invite a lot of crap from people. And it already has, and it sucks. But, uh, you know, that's part of what it is to be a follower of Christ. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives within me. I was crucified with him. He paid for this. He paid for all the bull crap that I have as a human being, all my sins, faults, and failures. And so I'm going to live for him. So I'm saying this to be obedient and to hopefully be helpful to you. But this is the vision that I had. The the poles and the pegs that you would use to set up a tent were in the bag. And Finland is like a tent without any poles or pegs. Um, what is a tent without poles or pegs? It is a loosely flying uh, and flappy tarp. A tent is a structure that provides safety and stability for its inhabitants. A tent is a place of safety, protection, shelter, and comfort in the outdoors and in various elements. A tent without pegs or poles is just a glorified tarp. And as I'm saying this, I am reminded of, uh, I think it's in James, where, you know, if you do not have faith, you're basically like a person that's just tossed in the ocean. You're not ruddered. You're not solid. You don't have a solid grasp so just something about that, like being tossed to and fro in, in the ocean is, is a, a word that I'm sensing right now as I'm saying this. Later that night, I saw a golf ball. So another vision, another golf vision, golf ball. And I knew with it was this impression, three years left. This is a confirmation and a reminder of another night where I was still troubled about this whole message. And I was praying to God, especially about the timing, because I'm like, God, Throughout scripture, it's it's very common that God will talk in uh, seasons, times and seasons. Daniel, when he prophesies the end times, there are times and seasons. Jesus says, in the same way that you see uh, fig trees producing leaves, you recognize that a season of harvest is around the corner. Times and seasons are often how God will speak. But I, I was like, I was trying to like find the pulse and be like, God, can you give me like the exact like window here? And... Um, because when he says four years, did that mean four to five years or three to four years? And the first, uh, and this was like two months ago. Okay. The first impression that I had was like a tab that would pop up on a computer. It was just this impression that I was receiving of 3.5 years, but I was still asking for greater clarity and confirmation while praying, while doing my quiet time, putting in the sacrifice to, uh, like to, you know, to just be a good servant of Christ to people here. I was trying to figure out like, Lord, I need a better, like more, more dialed in. You know, I want to be an archer who hits the bullseye here. And I heard the Lord say to me, times, 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 and half a time, confirming that this was a 3.5 years left. That was around the start of May. And this brings the date to be around 2026 to 2027. A word to the wise, do not leave things to the last minute. Okay. Word to the wise. 
You have a window to prepare in the same way that Joseph received a dream. He saw seven fat cows, seven skinny cows, and he knew that you were going to have seven years of abundance before seven years of lack, and he knew to prepare. This is a call to the church to wake up and prepare. It's been very hard for me just seeing the fact that there's been very little response. Now, I am not unacquainted with Finnish people. Okay, I've spent seven or eight years coming and going from here. A lot of people would say, why would God use you to deliver these messages? Well, number one, I'm not afraid to. Okay, I'm not afraid to uh, speak this out. And I, I've counted the cost, right? <laughs> I've counted the cost, and I'm sure that the cost is not over. I feel as though I'm not being effective if I'm not receiving some of the the, the personal uh, backlash that comes as a result. But <sighs> either way, I'm being obedient in sharing this. Do not wait until, and if you haven't seen the other videos, you, you should, you should go watch those. Now, here's the last thing that I'm going to say in the update of the Finland prophetic word, you know, three to 3.5 years. Um, I was again on, this was June 29th. So about two weeks ago, troubled by this and in prayer, in the afternoon, I just had to carve out some time and go pray and lay in bed and weep before the Lord, but also seek of the Lord, because we have the ability to do that, right? Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be as well. They did that in his day and age, and they would leave an expensive gift, a down payment. That is what Holy Spirit is. We have the down payment of Christ. We have the Spirit of God within us. We have a 24-7 access to talk to God. And yes, we do have to repent of sin. And yes, our sinful nature can open up doors for distractions, for deception, for uh, foul spirits, demonic spirits, sooth slayers, witches, war like warlocks. There's stuff out there, but they're all intimidated by the light of Christ because you are a city on a hill, right? We have Christ within us. Greater is he who is within us than he who is in the world. And Jesus is the word of God. He's got words for us. He's got words for you. So I was just pursuing him. Troubled by this. And I was, you know, my own practical life. I'm like, Lord, when do I leave? When do I move out? You know, when do I go back to my family in the States? And I went into, I went to take a nap and I fell asleep. And I sound my, this, this is the positive silver lining, but it's, you're going to see it's, it's not easy. Okay. It's work. I found myself in a vision in the same way that athletes will huddle up. You know, they'll throw their arms around each other and they'll be in a circle and they'll be huddled up. There's a vision of me with a group of people all huddled up. Okay, this is the body of Christ. We're huddled up and we were chanting salvations, salvations, salvations. And God was showing me this is what is on his heart. And I feel the glory and the presence of God as I'm saying this right now. Salvations. This is what is on God's heart for Finland. And I'm sorry to say this, but the difficulty to come is going to produce a lot of salvations for the kingdom of heaven. I'm not actually sorry to say that. I'm really joyful and expectant to say that because I know that that's God's heart. Like he is excited. Like the match is about to begin. This is about to begin. Salvations. Okay. This is what's on his heart, but it's going to be hard work. It's going to be challenging. There are three types of fun. This is the last thing that I'll say. And this is type two fun. Type one fun is like a roller coaster. It's happy and joyful while, while you do it. You know, it's wee, it's a whole lot of fun. Type two fun is hard and difficult while you go through it. But at the end, you look back and you're like, oh, that was so good. Kind of like hiking a mountain. You know, it's really hard. I'm sorry, there's not too many mountains here, but you can use the illustration. You know, it's really hard. You get up there and you're on top and then you're like, wow. And especially at, at the end of the day, when you're back home, you look back and you're like, that was hard, but that was amazing. And then type three fun, it's just not fun at all. It's not fun while it happens. And then you don't look back and say that that was fun. You know, it's just a crappy thing that happened and there was nothing good that came out of it. I'm saying this to say is that Finland is about to be in type two fun. Okay. You're about to be in a few years time and hopefully the writing is on the wall beforehand. Okay. I'm, that's what I'm praying for because people don't believe me. Uh, family, friends, people here do not believe me. Um, but I'm doing this nonetheless and I'm being effective within it. There are some who have, who do believe me and they have written to me and they've said that this has been a confirmation for them. They're already preparing. 
God bless you. I love hearing that. But I'm praying that the signs become evident soon. And I'm asking that you would partner with me in that prayer, okay? Wherever you are, whoever you are, please pray that people will receive this and see the writing on the wall soon. That being said, in a couple years' time, it's about to be type two fun, meaning it's going to be hard, it's going to be difficult, it's going to be challenging, there's going to be tears, there's going to be a lot of loss, there's going to be ground-shaking, ground movements, it's going to be... Like I, this is not a metaphorical thing. This is a literal thing, okay? But it's going to be the most rewarding season of life for those who take their faith seriously and are willing to live for Christ. So I'm going to pray a blessing over Finland. I have put my hands on the ground here and bless this land in Jesus' name, and I'm going to pray and, and uh, release the glory of God and the fire of God over you right now. Jesus, may your kingdom invade earth and may earth reflect heaven. I pray, God, that we would be swords in your hand, that we would use our mouths, that we would use the lives that you have given us uh, to effectively destroy strongholds of darkness and to shine bright as a city on a hill. And I'm sensing this now. It's important that I say this. If you don't know Christ, if you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus, I would encourage you right now, wherever you are, whenever you can, just say, close your eyes and say, Jesus, I want to know you. Holy Spirit, please reveal yourself to me. And then just simply apologize. I'm sorry for my sinful nature, and I believe that you paid for all of my mistakes, and so I just want to enter into that life of freedom with you. Heaven on earth. So, again, I will link the other two videos in the comment section below. As well, there's an email. You are free to write to me. Just please keep it short and concise. I welcome emails from everyone. Um, And I may not respond to every email, but um, yeah, I just, I hope that you hear the clarion call. All right.